yesterday. He released his report. We've reached Mr. Richard on the phone this morning. Good morning, Mr. Richard. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Terry. Um, Mr. Richard, in this particular case, this incident uh, involved more elements of the justice system than just the Fredericton Police Force and its officers. Um, a judge had to look at the charge and say, go ahead, yeah, that'll work. And the police chief had to look at it and say, yes, go ahead and do this. Where did the legal system go wrong in this case? I, I think the, the usual practice was followed. And so when police officers in New Brunswick uh, investigate a uh, complaint, they'll, uh, they'll consult with the Crown prosecutors, as they always do. We, our jurisdiction is a pre-charge screening jurisdiction. There are three in Canada. Uh, and that means that no charges can be laid by the by any police officer unless it's approved by the Crown. Um, no search warrant can be obtained unless it's approved by the Crown and and signed by a provincial court judge. So, I mean, obviously the police have a role in accumulating evidence and and and, and, and conducting an investigation according to their to their guidelines and standards. Uh, but there are checks and balances along the way, and, and yes, uh, certainly, uh, at the end, at, at, from my review of the file, and I had uh, uh, many, many pages of, of, uh, of the file to look at, it was evident that they had consulted along the way. They talked to Crown prosecutors. Obviously, they obtained approval for the search warrant. It was really at the very end of the process uh, that the Crown decided not to go ahead with the charge. So did the checks and balances that were in place, did they work? I mean, did, did the Crown say this, this, uh, this section of the Constitution is, this charge is iffy under the Constitution, it's been uh, proven unconstitutional or been found unconstitutional in other jurisdictions? Did the judge speak up and say this, this may be found unconstitutional? Did the checks and balances work? Well, as, as usual, the answer is yes and no. I mean, I think from my perspective, certainly if this wasn't a pre-charge screening jurisdiction, charges would have been laid against Charles LeBlanc. Uh, the police were pretty, pretty intent. I mean, they had a, uh, they had a, a, a very um, aggressive uh, alleged victim. And who was who was also a member of the force? So so there was considerable pressure, I think, on on the part of the victim. To, when you say very aggressive, what do you mean? Well, I, I mean he filed, I think, three different complaints. Uh, he he was a member of the force. Uh, they would certainly it would have to be part of the conversation, as it would be in any workplace, right? So he wasn't very happy. After all, uh, Mr. LeBlanc had called him a, a sexual predator, uh, a sexual. Um, uh, pervert. Uh, he, he'd alleged that children in Fredericton were not safe while this officer was a member of the force. Pretty serious allegations, right? So he, he was not happy. So there was, I think, considerable pressure to, to lay a charge. Uh, and at the end, uh, the Crown rejected uh, the, the investigation and said that the charge wouldn't stick, that 301 had been found to be unconstitutional in other provinces in Canada. In fact, it had been found unconstitutional in New Brunswick as well, in a case that, that we found during, in the course of our review. So, um, so I guess in that sense it worked. On the other hand, I do raise in the review the, the idea that uh, being subject to a search warrant is, 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 is a blunt instrument, right? It's, it's an unpleasant, very intrusive uh, kind of intervention by police. So you have eight uh, members of the two police forces, two RCMP tech crime experts, and six members of the Fredericton Police Force at your door. That's not a that's not a good day for anyone for anyone to go through. So it, I, I mean, I certainly uh, thought that there might be some way to have the Crown review the investigation before a search warrant is is handed out is approved. Now, the Crown has, in, has replied, I can certainly ask them and interviewed uh, the Crown on that issue, and they said, you know, we, we, uh, we provide our opinion once the investigation is complete and not in the middle of the investigation, and obtaining a search warrant is part of a police investigation in the usual course of affairs. So, I mean, I, I, and I, I, wouldn't, I don't know that it would be more effective uh, to provide, but I think in this kind of case, with a very, uh, you know, well-known um, uh, 
potential accused, uh, a very controversial kind of issue, it, it would have been very useful to get the legal opinion in the hands of the police earlier on uh, and, and, and avoid the, the issuing of a, of a search warrant. I guess, I guess the, the central issue here is given the origin of the police action as you describe it with a, a particular officer being very aggressive in you know, laying three complaints, the subsequent action being eight police officers, Mr. LeBlanc has described it as uh, ten I believe, but we'll, we'll go with your number. I, I can confirm it's eight. It's to say, okay, eight police officers showing up at this man's apartment with a search warrant. Some, some might, might see the police action as being an abuse of authority. Is that how you saw it? No, no, and I, I would have said that if I'd seen that. No, in terms of the investigation itself, procedures were followed. In terms of the search warrant, uh, there were officers providing security. There was someone there to translate in case Mr. Blanc uh, required to be served in French, which, which he asked for. Uh, there were others, uh, just uh, two technical people really um, assessing the, the, uh, the computer uh, because it's, it's, it involved the computer, they needed some technical assistance. So, I mean, it's, but it's unpleasant. Let's, let's agree on that. I mean, that's, it's, it's very intrusive, but, but it is part, uh, you know, it's not unusual to obtain a search warrant uh, to gather the evidence in the course of a police investigation. That, that is not unusual, uh, but given that Section 301 so clearly it has been found to be unconstitutional, not at any appellate level, right? It's only at the, the level of Court of Queen's Bench. So, I mean, it has been argued to, to me that, you know, technically uh, no appeal court has, has reviewed these decisions. Uh, so, uh, but given that 301 seems very clearly to be unconstitutional, it, it is, I mean, a lot of resources were spent on something that had no potential of ever going to court, in my view. Now, there were other options, and it's not unusual, for instance, for police to, to investigate under one section, but then to charge under another section following advice from the Crown. That might have happened here. Section 301 is unconstitutional. Section 300 has been found to be constitutional, and it also deals with criminal libel. So uh, there were other options, certainly, uh, but uh, I think it's all in all, it's a very unfortunate uh, event, and and I and I also believe, and I've stated that in the report, that uh, that the, the given the history uh, between Charles LeBlanc and the Freighton Force, uh, that this uh, file should have been handed off to another uh, police uh, uh, force uh, to investigate. Was Clearly. there any evidence that that was at any time considered by anyone within the department, or or the Crown, or the judge that approved the, the search warrant? Yes, I, there is evidence of that. I mean, I, I did have access to the file, and there was some discussion on whether or not to uh, to provide. Certainly, that came up during the interviews. Um, but you know, most police forces feel that they can conduct independent investigations, and and, and it's not uncommon to receive complaints from police officers. It might be for a break and enter, or a theft, or assault, or that sort of thing. So it, it is. It's not that uncommon. And, and I'm sure the police uh, force and, and, you know, people were consulted along the way. This was given to a, a fairly experienced uh, a person, officer, to, to conduct uh, the investigation. There was, there was lots of consultation with, with superiors in the force, including up to the deputy chief and chief. So, so certainly they, they had an inkling that this was a controversial, they knew, I mean, obviously, that this was a controversial investigation. Uh, but they felt that they, that, that they could handle it professionally. Uh, and, and by and large, they, they did. Uh, but clearly, they were looking at the wrong section, uh, and clearly, uh, public perception was not on their side. I think it, it, there's no way they could win the perception battle on, by investigating Charles LeBlanc, given the history with the force. And I, I think a lot of a lot of the issues might have been avoided if if they had asked the RCMP or somebody else to investigate. Did you did you interview Charles LeBlanc? Did you sit down and talk to him about this? He declined my invitation uh, for an interview. I, I, there was no way I could compel witnesses. I interviewed many members of the police force. I, I didn't inter interview the, the alleged victim either because he, he declined as well. So I, I think certainly in terms of the context of what, what caused all of this to happen, 
there are some pieces missing because I couldn't ask questions. What are the pieces that, that are missing as far as you're concerned? Well, I mean, certainly I would have asked Mr. LeBlanc uh, uh, why he didn't raise his, the, the serious allegation that he made that the, the constable who issued the ticket, the, the bylaw infraction, uh, had touched his private part, as he put it. Why he didn't make that allegation on the day that it happened, because he went to the police force uh, station and filed a complaint, and he never mentioned that. He mentioned it several days later in, on his blog. And then that became the whole focus of, of his uh, protest. And, and yet he had, had not raised it early on. Uh, he, he, he claimed that the, the video would prove that that happened. And yet I looked at the video dozens of times and there's, it, it just doesn't prove anything at all. Uh, so I would have questioned him on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have liked to ask the police officer why he, he, he was in the middle of, a, of an operation. He was providing backup, so a, 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 at a lesser level. Uh, he was in the middle of an operation on King Street, took the time to, to call Charles over from the other side of the street uh, to give him a ticket for not wearing a helmet, a pretty low-level offense, something that happens virtually every day in New Brunswick. Uh, so uh, I thought, I mean, certainly it fed uh, Mr. LeBlanc's perception and many other people's perception uh, that, that he was being, uh, in, in some way, uh, uh, you know, victimized. Uh, uh, it, it was an act of provocation or payback for, for past deeds. So, I mean, I think all in all, I, I would have liked to, to shed more light on that part of the uh, of the issue, but uh, as for the investigation itself, uh, the police uh, force and all of the officers I talked to, I mean, they were uh, quite uh, quite open, transparent with me. They answered all the questions. I, I was very impressed with, I have to say, very impressed with the acting chief, Fitch, yesterday, because she was, your reporter actually asked her if it had been different under her watch. And that's a parachute that uh, a lot of people I've, I've worked with over the years would have uh, taken to bail out. But she, she took full responsibility, and I, I admire that, and, and admire uh, the fact that she was very, you know, she, she took full responsibility throughout my review and, I, and, and, and has committed to uh, in, implement all of my recommendations. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Mr. Richard, I appreciate your time. Thank you for talking to us. Anytime. Take care. Bye-bye. That was uh, Bernard Richard. He led an independent review of how Fredericton police handled the criminal libel case of Charles LeBlanc. Any comments, please get in touch. Info am at fredericton.cbc.ca. Here's Jennifer Sweet now with a look at your news headlines. New Brunswick's Auditor General has raised questions about overbilling of Medicare. Kim McPherson released her annual report to the legislature yesterday. She says more than $3 million a year could be recovered with better auditing of doctor billing. The New Brunswick Medical Association says part of the problem is outdated billing software. New Brunswick politicians may be steering road repair dollars away from where they're needed most.